Dry Fasting versus Water Fasting An Overview When it comes to fasting, you'll find a buffet of options, and it's crucial to understand what you're putting your body through before you start depriving it. Dry fasting and water fasting are two such dishes on the fasting menu, and they each come with their own flavor of benefits and challenges. Dry Fasting – The Hard No to H2 O oh, dry fasting is a step beyond water fasting. Imagine Frodo's journey to Mordor, but without any Lemba's bread or even a sip from his water skin. In a dry fast, you consume no food or water at all for a set period. Supporters claim it's a superior detox method, but let's unpack this. Pros Accelerated detox Some people believe dry fasting pushes the body to break down more fat, as it holds water, to stay hydrated, possibly increasing detoxification. Spiritual and mental discipline just like training for an ultra-marathon, it can teach you a lot about mental resilience. Reduced Inflammation Limited research has suggested that dry fasting may reduce inflammation, which is like taking your body's defense system off high alert. Cons Dehydration risks Seriously, this is not for the faint of heart or the kidney compromised. Dehydration can be dangerous. Harder to sustain Like trying to listen to someone explain quantum mechanics while you're hangry, this fast is tough to stick to without water. Potential health risks. Going without water for too long can mess with your electrolytes, and that's a party you don't want to crash. Think kidney stones or worse. Water fasting. The old reliable. There's a reason why every apocalyptic movie has the hero looking for water instead of, say, a juice cleanse. Water fasting allows you to drink water but no food. It's a classic for a reason. Pros. Hydration maintenance. You're giving your digestive system a break without risking turning into a raisin. Autophagy. This is like your body's version of spring cleaning, where it clears out damaged cells. Water fasting may promote this process. Potentially easier to sustain. It's like running a marathon flat versus with hills. You're still running, but the water helps. Cons. Potential muscle loss. No amino acids coming in means your body might go looking for them in your muscles, which is no bueno if you're fond of your current musculature. Might lower blood pressure. Great for some, but if your BP is already low, you might find yourself feeling like a 90-year-old granddad standing up too fast. The schedule. Timing is everything. As for a good schedule, it's crucial to listen to your body and consult with a healthcare professional, especially if you've got any underlying conditions. Here's a common approach. For water fasting, start with a 24-hour fast once a week. As you adapt, consider extending the length or increasing frequency. Always break your fast gently with easily digestible foods. For dry fasting, not recommended without medical supervision. Start with a shorter period, like 16 hours overnight, to see how your body reacts. Some might do a 24-hour dry fast, but this should be done rarely and with caution. In Portland, Oregon, where the rain is as common as old vinyl shops, one can always stare out into the historic Willamette River for inspiration, contemplating the cycle of water itself. But when it comes to your body, respect it like the majestic Multnomah Falls in our neck of the woods. Nourish it properly. Don't push it beyond its limits, and always enjoy the natural flow.